Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Music Podcast once again. Uh, thank you to the subscribers. If you are not a subscriber, please consider hitting that button. If you like what you hear and what you see, it gives me the opportunity to bring you great guests like the one I have today. Uh, Jay Farron. Jay is a recording, uh, mixing, and mastering engineer, as well as a producer, bassist, and singer. He also holds a master's degree in film scoring. Uh, he's a busy guy. Uh, our focus today <laughs> is going to be on a project that he got started during the COVID lockdown. Uh, it's a heavy rock duo called Skull Riot. Uh, Skull Riot has a five-song EP called Too Little Too Late, and it's out right now. Uh, Jay, it's great to have you, man. Man, thank you so much for having us, man. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Uh, it's an exciting time for you. Uh, you know, you've done so much with your life in such a small amount of time. Uh, I, re I really, <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's amazing. It's inspiring, really. Uh, tell me, thank you, man. We'll get started from the from the beginnings for you because uh, born Juan Manuel Ferron Coronado in Mexico City, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah you're the first one that actually researched my whole name oh yeah 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 i probably know more <laughs> about you than you know about you but at this point but uh you know well i mean your story is a great one uh like i say you've done a, a lot with your life in a small amount of time uh but and you, you know you're so young uh you're born in mexico city uh, tell yeah. me about your upbringing and your decision to move to the states i mean that's a brave courageous move for a, for a young kid to do uh so t tell me about your upbringing and what made you move here um well i i had a very regular childhood like everyone else i guess uh mexico city i don't know if you've been there but uh it's a huge city is i always compare it to new york kind of kind of thing you know there's a lot of people in a very compact space right. um but you have everything you know like you have everything to, you want to do you can go anywhere. Uh, you can do any kind of sports. You can listen to any kind of music. Uh, it's a very cosmopolitan city. So um, I was thankful to 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 grow up there because I was exposed to a lot of things from the very early age. Right. Um, at the same time, in my house, my dad was a very like a huge fan of like the Beatles. So there's always like the Beatles were always there. Uh, playing the background uh, my mom was more like on the pop side more like abba and like uh, more spanish romantic music kind of thing going on so i was like okay there's music you know but um the best friend like my dad's best friend uh when i was like 10 i think he saw me like really digging into like the heavier part of the beatles like abbey road and like yeah. uh the white album and like stuff like that so he was like ah i think that you like heavier stuff uh let me next time i come i'll bring you something and he was like a huge music fan so he had a lot of stuff but he was more into the rock right so when he came back he came back with pink floyd jazz genesis and uh i mean the popular thing he brought me was u2 uh and that's back then. So I was like, wow, this is another world that I had no idea existed. Uh, and that opened like the possibilities for me to start researching and start doing my own thing, you know, like, oh, so there's more outside this. Uh, um, and from then on, the, then my cousin, he, he lived in McAllen, Texas. So every time he came back to visit, he would come in with like a CD and a playlist and, uh, <laughs> And he would have like crazy stuff from metal to punk to some reggae, some ska. And I was like, dude, this is insane. And obviously American bands that, you know, were coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so he put me on into punk music at an early age. Also, like I was like probably 12 and I was already like a punk head. And I was like, I, this is, this is for me, you know? And at 16, I, I, uh, I started my first band, but I started like doodling with bass like around 14. Okay. Um, and it was not till 16 that I started my band because I was like huge into punk and I was like, you know what? I can play this. Like it's only four notes on bass. Like I can do right. this throughout the three minute song, right? Or two <laughs> minutes, fast songs. Right. Um, 
And that's where it all started. Uh, once I set a foot on stage for the first time, it was like a huge adrenaline rush. And, um, and I just fell in love with it, you know? I just fell in love with the stage and like playing stuff for other people and seeing them respond and like uh. going through that whole process. And I was like, this is it. I think this is what I like. So, um, fast forward, I, uh, tried to study music, only study music. Uh, but there was like a huge fight with my parents. They were like really, really uh, a little bit more conservative and like, they're like, no, you can't be a musician. So after fighting a lot, um, I decided to do both. I did like a master's, I did an, uh, a bachelor's in, uh, accounting and a bachelor's in, um, audio engineering. So, after that, I uh, started my own business. I was playing with like three, four bands over there. We were going places, but you know, like it, it, everything comes to a point where there's a decision to be made. And um, unfortunately, in all of those bands, the decision was like not to keep going right. for different reasons. Um, so at this point in my life, I was like without any musical career. <laughs> and I was without any partner or anyone next to me that would like focus on music as I was. Uh, um, so I was like, you know what? I think this is a great time for me to make a move and really focus in my career now as, as music only. And that's when I made the choice. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to move to LA and make a master's and take it from there and see where it goes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's brave, man. It is, it is. That's how it, not, it is. It, uh, to be honest, it was not. It. it was not easy to leave everything behind and to leave all the comfort behind. Um, come to a different place, even though I visited before because I have cousins here. It's not the same to visit as a tourist, right? And then live in the place and figure it out by yourself, and be here and like try to break through and uh and face the competition because here the level is in another level yeah it, it it literally put me to the to the ground a couple of times in in more than one way to be like damn i really need to step up because here is tough yeah oh yeah 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 there's a lot of tough things about uh the la california thing uh you know it's not a cheap place to live either so no so there's a lot of hurdles that's you know and i know uh that that had to be difficult for you so uh you yeah. know i applaud you uh what you've done oh, thank you thank with you. your life and your career is fantastic uh, and you've got a long that, way man. to go it's uh it's great to hopefully see you. yeah it's great to see you growing here uh now you find work Great work as an engineer and producer at The Room Studios. Uh, you worked yeah. for 11-time Grammy-nominated producer Mauricio Garza. Uh, yeah. That's a great gig. Uh, it sounds like it is, for sure, and I think you're still <laughs> there, right? Um, yeah. And, and I know it's a popular studio for hip-hop artists, especially. It is. So, and that's like a, a different kind of production animal uh, from definitely from what you're doing with Skull Riot. Uh, how has your work at the studio influenced what you do with Skull Riot, like in the production side of things? And because it's, a, you know, like I say, it's a, it's a whole different thing. And, you know, they're, yeah, so it's a little flatter, more at you, uh, that wall of sound. Whereas the hip hop thing has a lot of, you know, the big bass sound with the, you know, there's a peak and valley thing. Uh, did it help you to, to do that when you were doing Skull Riot? Um, it helped me in the way that I wanted to get away from that as much as possible, right? I really wanted to be rock with no hip, hip hop whatsoever. Right. Um, but vocally, because, you know, when you're recording hip hop, most of the time you're really just recording vocals and you're more a vocal producer than anything else because they come with the beat done. And even if they give you the stems for the beat, like there's not a lot you can do, you know, like it's already there okay, right. and they just want to rap on top of it. So, uh, you're basically a vocal producer. So that helped me in skull, right? A lot because 
I'm really, first of all, not really confident about my vocals. Um, and, and I'm not really like comfortable with listening to my vocals back, you know, on the speakers yeah, coming back at you. Is. Yeah. I think everyone is. I know. Like I know yeah. that's like a thing, but like, um, <laughs> But it was for me, it was for a long time, uh, something that hold me back a lot. Um, Cause I was not, I was not sh like confident with myself about it, like just stepping into the mic and just going at it. But this time I was like, you know what? I have nothing to lose and maybe I can cover some of my flaws with my knowledge now. And that's what I tried to do, you know? Yeah. And it sounds it sounds great. It's, you know what it reminds me? It, it definitely follows in that type of thing that Royal Blood was doing. That's what it reminded me at first because of the bass. Uh, you know, they just uh, Royal Blood just did that. They pioneered that bass drum duo uh, and making the bass yeah, uh, more than, more than just what we know it as. Uh, and you do that same thing here. Uh, you know, your bass is like a guitar at times and it holds the low end as well as the high end you know the uh the riff part of the songs uh it's it's amazing how that one instrument kind of does that dual uh duty there uh but it really brings Thank back you. for me when i listen to the music it brings back a 80s hardcore punk thrash thing for me uh you know early coc power trip dri uh that you know that's oh, yeah. and i grew up with that stuff so hell yeah and i was like wow this is this is old school this is really yeah. and production that's what i noticed the production it's not polished it's flat it's raw it's unpolished and garage quality to it uh right and that really yeah. yeah yeah it was a that's a, that makes all the difference really once you clean it up it 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 loses something in translation i think uh yeah, did absolutely you it a, yeah, yeah you made it a point to do absolutely okay. absolutely yeah like there's i you know you don't know how how many hours i spent just going through spotify finding a new band uh especially metal or like rock that i'm like huh that caught my attention but I think, I, and, and for the longest, I couldn't figure it out what it was because they had good riffs. They have like interesting melodies and whatnot, but it was like something that was not captivating me. And I think it was the production side. It was too clean. It was too perfect. It was, it was just nothing that emulates the live situation of the band. And, and I was like, you know what? For Skull Ride, I I I I want this to be completely raw. Like my songs are raw. I scream. Um, I'm coming at it from a raw side. So let it just be as well. You know, um, yeah. and I wanted to to differentiate myself from Royal Blood as well because they're huge, right? And if I want to make a little bit of myself into that space. I need to be different. Uh, so I wanted to, to get away from them as much as possible. And they are very well produced. Yeah. Um, they sound very nice, very clean in a lot of things. Right. Um, so that's, that's why I also went with like more of a metal, hard rock, heavy music oriented yeah. punk side, rather than just like an alternative heavy band. You know what I mean? Right, right, yeah, and yeah. I mean, that was the only the only thing that that relates with Royal Blood for me is is the unique configuration of, of the bass. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The use of the bass, uh, the the sounds completely different. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even. There's there's really nothing similar other than that uh which yeah, i appreciate like i say uh, <laughs> i yeah. felt like i had met you and you had given me a cassette out of your trunk you know what i mean oh, that's awesome and that's cool <laughs> you know i was like yeah I, you know that's it's it's very personal in that way it is it is it's more like it's more real you know what i mean like it's, totally. it's like that's me that's us right now at this point of stage and this is what we have to say and hope you like it Obviously, the idea is to get a better sound throughout, you know, and ev evolve right. into delivering a better sound. Uh, but I, I saw it like Metallica did it. Like Metallica just came out and kill yeah. them all. It doesn't sound like, like 
like death magnetic. You no. know what I mean? Yep. At all. But yep. you still love Kill Em All because you have great songs in it and it's raw and it's the first thing they put out. Like it's a real band playing, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, I love that magnetic with all the production. It's sounding great. But somehow, like, you know, to keep that essence. Yes. They they have that ability to keep it real. Uh mm -hmm. and no matter what the production, you know. And I, that was yeah. uh, it's funny you mentioned that because that's exactly what I what came to mind to me is the Kill 'em All record is just so yeah. uh, it's like you know the the cassette tape out of the out of the trunk of the car mm -hmm. thing yeah uh, it's very raw and you know and then they just grew uh, but they didn't lose that edge uh, for me right, they, right. a lot of people think they did but uh, I don't know I just especially even the new record I I you know they just they have good songs in it yeah, yeah. they just keep that edge they they. They took a detour with the Sand Anger, but they can Yeah, this is true. This <laughs> is true. Uh, everybody has a, a little blip on their radar, you know. Uh, now, Skull Riots, you playing bass and singing, and then you have Sam Epstein on drums. Yeah. Um, when you guys play live, I know you don't use any tracks. Uh, Not at all. Which is crazy uh, for two guys to make the sound you do. Um, how do you fill that space? Uh, you know, of, of bass and guitar, uh, the bottom end especially when you're playing the the bass almost like a guitar with so you know not soloing but riffing on the high end there. Um, I get so many questions about <laughs> gear, gear uh, you gear know, wise. what your pedal board looks like. You know, what kind of strings? Do you use a thinner string? Uh, you know yeah. all that kind of stuff so if you if you go yeah. walk me through like a live presentation are, is there anything that you modify to to make it possible for you guys to do it as a duo um well first thing first is i the signal concept is um the signal out of my bass splits into three ways really so uh one goes to the bass amp and the other two goes to two different guitar amps. That's another thing I wanted to differentiate myself from Royal Blood. They only have one guitar amp. Uh, I wanted to have a stereo sound. I wanted to have two different sounds from the guitar so I can play with that spectrum as well. You know? And do you um, have a switch for that? Right. So uh, at the very beginning, I've, I've, the thing is I've gone through so many iterations of like to find the best way to handle all of the things that I need to do. Okay. Um, and the best solution i came up with right now is i have a quad cortex a dsp quad cortex yes. so uh signal comes in there split the signal into three one of them goes to the bass amp and the other two go to uh two pogs pog two mm -hmm. uh each one goes to its own pog two which gives me also a different kind of guitar sound for each one and then from there to the amp so I'm using the distortion of the amps. I'm not using any effects or pedals or anything like that. I'm just going. And that's what keeps it also very raw and very like straightforward. Yeah. Uh, and the quad cortex is the one that helps me navigate the switches and drop the bass, keep the guitars, drop the guitars, keep the bass, uh, bring in the other guitar. And I do use a an expression pedal that also helps me for the wah. Because okay. at the be at the very beginning, I was using a wah. Uh, I had the uh, Tremonti's wah. Okay. Uh, and it sounded really good with one guitar. When I introduced the second guitar, uh, my signal flow started getting a little bit more complicated and I couldn't get it to work how I wanted. Um, so the only solution was to bring like a an expression pedal and use it as a wah. Uh, for the guitars only and live that's how i do it and that's how we've been doing it and it's sounding good yeah it's it's, so cool. <laughs> it's it's unique it's a it's a pioneering effect uh it's it's really cool uh you play i've seen you play a four string do you ever play a five string is it would that would that change that i i have five i have a five string but the one that i have is more for like fusion pop uh, anything else that's not rock or alternative it's, it's a fodera uh nyc so it's more like on the jazz fusion side i used to have a ernie ball um 
five string, but I sold it. So I don't have that one anymore. Okay. Uh, so the only thing that I had was my four string, which is a Sadowski um, Metro. And it sounded really good. It's a j jazz bass configuration. Uh, even though it's a jazz bass, it sounds really good live. Mm -hmm. But I just made an addition to my to my gear that I'm really to to try out. And I um, ESP LTD uh, Mark Leon. It's a four string as well. Um, it's a kind of new bass they just put out, but I'm really excited to play with it. Um, geeking out, we are drop D like standard D throughout the whole thing. Um, some songs that are coming up in the next, in the next EP and in the album, the next album, they're going to be some drop C, um, or C standard. We're going to go even down and, and heavier uh, than what we have right now. Um, so for that, I was using standard, uh, strings. But they were not like giving me the, the the sustain and the sound that I wanted going down all the way to D. All right. So I switched to um, the Darius. Um, they have a specific one for drop tuned wow. instruments for <laughs> drop tuned basses, um, and they're a little bit heavier, but but they sound really good. They keep the sustain really good. Um, and I do need that so I can like maneuver quick, like in between strings and, and whatnot. Right, so right. That helped uh, that switching that to those strings helped a lot. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, you know, and I look at all of this and, and what you go through to get this to work for you, uh, you're doing a lot right. of double duty. Um, <laughs> why? Uh, you know, what made you d decide on the duo? Why not get a bass player or get a guitar player? A guitar player. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, simplify it for yourself, do a trio or, you know, four guys. Um, what made you do the duo? You, you, I mean, yeah, I think do it so well. And, and, but you know, it's, it seems like it, you're making it a little difficult for yourself. Uh, <laughs> you know? I am actually, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I like the challenge. I like the challenge a lot. I like the fact that I need to keep the bass going while thinking of some interesting guitar -y parts. Uh, so reef-oriented mind now comes into play, and I love the challenge. I like it, the technicality, the difficulty of like doing all of that at the same time singing. Like uh, I'm, I'm in love with that, right? But I think the decision comes from two things one the pandemic i was like just stuck here and um trying to figure out something i could do and discovered like and i got really into royal blood i knew them before but i was like oh, you know what these guys are doing something really interesting let me figure this out uh maybe there's something i could do um so that really motivated me to like try something like that and second i'm kind of I think uh, I have my own trauma when it comes to bandmates. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try this configuration and keep it the most simple way that I can just deal with the least amount of people and I can have a little bit more control over the band and where it's going and get us somewhere without, without dealing and... Um, you know the back and forth yep. and negotiating with other people and yep. it was, it's too much for me sometimes so it, it's rough you know the more people you get involved the, the more complicated it gets yeah yeah but, i know it's a it's a you know constant pros and you you get some you leave something seem you leave something else on the table when you do that you know right i, I know the songs could be way bigger with another guitar player or way more epic with guitar solos and whatnot and like but well, i also kind of like the uniqueness that this brings to the table uh people when they see us live they are really impressed they're like how like wait what i thought it was just like yeah uh, you're gonna play with tracks or something and 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 that also gives us like great results so i was like you know what i think this is a good choice let's just keep this 
Yeah. This track. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds cool. You know, like I say, I you know, I think if you added more, you'd end up being, you know, more like a regular band. This, band, this, yeah. this sounds this has a certain unique something to it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. you know? Um, and it really reminds me of that old school stuff, which I miss tremendously. So yeah, I, I love it. it. Yeah, me too, man. I grew up with that too. They were a huge influence. Believe it or not, like I don't think you can hear it, but um when i was coming out with like before recording i was still making some changes to the songs i was listening a lot to like megadeth and uh metallica and testament and like all that old school iron maiden and stuff like that so i was just like i need to somehow channel this because huh. this is what i'm missing right now in, in metal i don't listen to this on radio or on spotify anymore uh, I, yeah. I wanted to have something like that yeah, it, it's cool. It is really cool. Um, you've got a single. It's called Blood and Crows. Uh, you got a video for that song, and man, it's a video and a half, boy. Uh, <laughs> the 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 animation for for the Blood and Crows video uh, is tremendous, man. It's oh, really, thank you, man. Really cool. Um, tell me about the video. I, you know, who did the animation? How much you know d input did you have? Did you you know tell them what to design or you know how did that work um well i handled that video the same i handled everything else in skull riot <laughs> i did it myself um wow. with with that huge help of ai i gotta go back and i was like you know what i need to figure out something uh, i want to put something that's cool um and i i just spent like probably a week figuring out how to get what I wanted from the animation uh, till I was kind of like happy with like five videos that I created, independent videos. And then from there, I, I talked to uh, one of my good friends uh, that just moved to Portland. Uh, he's a videographer, editor. And I was like, dude, I need you to make a cool edit out of these five videos and put them together uh for the music video and he was like fuck yeah i'll help you out <laughs> and uh and that's the only thing that i didn't do um uh, well i didn't I didn't do a lot a ai did most of it to be honest yeah, but well but, still, but you have to input the prompts correctly so that absolutely. they come out <laughs> well but you know and, and the whole design of you know where yeah but the whole idea oh, the gosh. whole concept it was obviously me yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there'll there'll be a link there, and you know, please everybody click it because it's it's a fun watch, man. I mean, and oh, it fits you, the man. it fits the song really well. Uh, right. It's just uh, yeah, it is. It's amazing. Uh, it's really thank cool. you. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. I'm happy that you liked it, man. Not everybody can do that. It doesn't. It doesn't have a lot of views, so we need yeah. to bring that up. Actually, yeah, man. Well, we'll we'll. we'll see if we can thank you man it because people should be watching it it's uh it's really cool um playing live especially with halloween coming live yeah 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 uh, with halloween coming up along yeah i think it fits that it has that look for sure man yeah, yeah. it's it's almost monotone you know it's got a little bit mm -hmm. of color to it but it's mostly black and white kind of you know yeah. sharp i wanted the when the red came out to like stand up yeah yeah, that definitely did. It definitely did. Yeah, it, I love it. I love the video. It's, it's really Thank awesome. Um, playing live, uh, touring. Uh, is that something that's, you know, something you want to do? Um, Absolutely. Would you bring any players in a live setting? Or would you keep it as a duo? We'll keep it as a duo as long as I can go. Like, uh, I don't want to. I think Sam and I, we have a great thing going on. We have a good chemistry. We're building up uh, towards the sound of our own rather than my sound, um, which I'm really excited to present in the in the album that's coming up. Um, so I think I'm going to keep it as a duo for as long as I can, um, first of all. And second, yes, um, we're trying to get out there as much as we can. Uh, right now, Sam is on a personal hiatus. Uh, he's coming back in uh, at the end of October. So we're going to pick it up and start playing again um, to the end of the year. And hopefully, mid next year, when once the album is done and dropped, 
we can tour a little bit, at least the West Coast, and then if we can, the East Coast as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely in our plans to go out there and tour and support this this music that we're doing. We believe in it a lot. So I think people would be excited to at least see it live yeah. And, yeah. and see how it translates as well, you know, live. It, I tell you, it's a cool dynamic to see, you know, two guys making all that sound, man. There's a lot of sound coming out <laughs> of you. Yeah. Uh, it's really <laughs> cool, man. I, I'm like super proud of what you've done with your life. With I appreciate your, you. Man. It's really, really cool, man. And I, uh, you know, it means a lot, man. Thank you so much. Doors always open here. Uh, you know, put the, put the album out, get the tour going, come on back and tell us about it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. We will, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Great conversation. Awesome questions. You put me through a pickle in a couple of them, but it's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so I'll much, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take care, Jay. Awesome. All right. Peace. See you, bud. Bye.